Willow who ruined my entire high school experience. Seven years later, she turned out to be my interviewer. She was an indelible part of my heart, a nemesis in my dreams, looking at her. I remembered the fierce physical battle from seven years ago. I said, today, you and I will settle our scores and determine our fate. Later, she pinned me down, whispering softly, the outcome is clear. I just want to be on top of you, to men and one woman, three interviewers sitting across from me. From what they said, they wanted me to take a bunch of steel pipes and somehow make them into a redwood sofa. I resisted the urge to snap back, looking at them. The woman had permed waves, fair skin, and wore thin-framed gold glasses. Her cute little nose contrasted sharply with the exaggerated curves on her chest. Her taste was questionable, but she was truly beautiful. I thought wickedly. No wonder they say the sea embraces all. The great have capacity. Noticing my gaze, she quickly glanced at me, then looked down, pretending to play with her phone. Strange. Why did she seem more nervous than I was? The more I looked, the more familiar she seemed. It felt like there was a thin bubble blocking her face. And if I dared to poke it, I could see her true self. She sneaked another glance at me, saw that I was still staring at her, and hurriedly put down her phone, pretending to pick at her nails. I suddenly stood up, pointing at her. What the? Willow. She also stood up, stammering. What? You don't mess around. Old grudges and new grievances flooded my heart as I walked towards her. Don't mess around. I guess my face looked menacing because the man in the middle reached out to stop me. What are you doing? He turned to her. Willow, do you know each other? She clutched her chest, stepped back, and timidly nodded. Wow, seven years apart. And now she's pretending to be a lady. Where was the roughness of pinning me down back then? Where was the boldness of kicking me to pieces? In high school, I was a quiet, rule-abiding kid who loved to draw. I had two unforgettable female classmates, one was named Anna, the other Willow. Anna was very pretty, and I liked to secretly draw her. Later, a guy named Fun grabbed my stack of drawings and held them up. Let me see who you've been drawing. Instantly, a crowd surrounded him, and I couldn't push through to get my drawings back. They flipped through the pages, one by one, of Anna gazing out the window, Anna smiling. All the drawings were of the same girl. Finally, they all looked at Anna. She was at a loss, blushing, and laid her head on her desk, not wanting to see any of it. My heart sank. My secret crush, which should have ended quietly, was now exposed for all to see. I walked home, dejected, stepping on my shadow. Hey, George, a voice like cotton candy came from behind. Anna was following me with a smile. Sorry. I apologized. My head hung low, feeling I had implicated her. Give me the sketchbook. She extended her slender fingers, translucent in the evening light. I fumbled to get the sketchbook out. She hugged it to her chest, hummed softly, turned, and then looked back with a smile. It's good. I like it. Watching her hair sway, I felt like I was floating. My young, innocent feelings growing wildly. Unfortunately, Willow shattered those feelings with one blow. Willow was the sports commissioner, with short, neat hair and outstanding track and field performance. She represented the school in many sprint events. Probably used to being decisive and efficient, she especially hated procrastination. I wasn't in great shape, so I often fell behind during runs, and she would push me along while cursing like a dung beetle. I was lazy and always tried to hide in the classroom during break exercises, but she would always find me first, blowing her whistle like a pig farmer, and drive me downstairs. At that time, I often drew little comics from my classmates, so she was always the main villain in my stories. If these works unfortunately fell into her hands, she would crumple them into a ball and throw them into the trash. That was my hard work, and it broke my heart, but I didn't dare to say anything, so I portrayed her even worse in my comics to vent my anger. After the incident with Aina's sketchbook, she sat on my desk with her legs crossed over the chair opposite, looking like a commander ready for battle, making me tremble with fear. Hey, great artist, with so much free time, draw a few pictures for me too. With that, she jumped off the desk, resting her right hand on the place she had just sat on, her left foot on the horizontal bar of my chair. Leaning slightly forward towards me, she wore a slightly wild smile and looked at me lazily. Years of running training had given her skin a tense wheat color. Her most noticeable feature was her long legs, typical of an athlete, with well-defined, tight calf muscles, and her thighs were long, strong, 
and beautifully shaped by long-term training. Meeting her gaze, her face was wild yet charming, with a pair of vibrant, deep, and intense eyes. Unfortunately, at that time, I liked fair-skinned, fresh, and delicate girls, unable to appreciate her athletic vitality. I just thought she looked like a tombow, with no attraction for me. I shook my head and said, I can't draw you. She raised her left eyebrow slightly and asked, What do you mean, don't you draw well? If I'm so good at drawing, why do you always crumple and tear up my drawings and throw them in the trash? I looked at her angrily. Mourning my lost comic originals, all your drawings are rubbish. You were the one who criticized yourself. I didn't say anything. But what you drew wasn't me at all. It was defamation. Slander. You need to face yourself. She puffed up like a silly deer but quickly smiled and said, Fine. You won't draw. Then run the 1500 meters at the school sports meet. There's not a single boy from our class signed up, which is useless. She winked at Anna and said, Isn't it useless? Anna giggled, and Fung and the others egged me on, making it seem like if I didn't run, I'd disgrace the whole class. I got carried away. Run. I'll run. You don't think I can finish, do you? I was determined to let Anna see my moment of glory. So, after the 1500 meter race, I became famously embarrassing at school, that's the guy who fainted during the 1500 meters. The funniest part was when a girl went to help him, and he puked on her shoes. Unfortunately, that girl they were talking about was Anna. She really saw my moment of glory. Anna started to politely distance herself, never showing me that shy, gentle smile again. All of this was thanks to Willow's ill intentions. She definitely knew I would make a fool of myself. I was filled with resentment and completely at odds with Willow. I drew a series of comics about a dung beetle girl pushing dung balls on the playground. A few days later, high-resolution photos of me fainting and vomiting were circulated throughout the school. Damn it, she even took secret photos of me. I hit her bike in the woes bathroom, and the next day, my bike was hung up in a tree. Such incidents were too many to count. My entire high school life was almost consumed by fighting with her. As the college entrance exams approached, she said it was pointless and suggested we make peace. I glared at this vicious woman who had humiliated me for two years and gritted my teeth. Tool, today, you and I will settle our scores and determine our fate. Let's fight like men. Fine. She agreed without hesitation. In the empty indoor basketball court, she threw me over her shoulder, leaving me dazed. She straddled me, her arm choking my neck, looking at me mockingly. Do you give up? My face turned red as I struggled hard. She also used more strength. And we both started breathing heavily. Her breath hit my face. It was actually a sweet strawberry scent. How could a tombo have a strawberry scent? I was psychologically scarred. And later, I developed a strong aversion to all strawberry-flavored foods. In a fit of anger, I wrapped my legs around her waist, flipped her over, and straddled her, breathing heavily in her face. You were ruthless. Don't blame me for being unjust. I had eaten garlic chives. She stared at me in disbelief. And for a moment, her eyes seemed unfocused. She admitted defeat, stood up, tittied her clothes, and asked if I was satisfied. I grabbed the back of her neck and pressed down. From now on, you have to call me big brother. To my surprise, just like a cat, grabbing the back of her neck seemed to hit her weak spot. She went completely soft and repeatedly begged for mercy. After discovering her weak spot, I enjoy a period of glory. She began to behave unusually obedient and considerate towards me. She even researched and analyzed for my college entrance exam choices, finally suggesting furniture design. Her earnest persuasion almost moved me to forgive her. However, it turned out that a traitor remains a traitor. It was all just a ruse. On the afternoon of our graduation photo shoot, I finally found Anna, blushing. I asked if she would take a photo with me alone. After hesitating for a while, she nodded. I put one hand in my pocket, slightly tilted my body, and raised the corner of my left mouth slightly. To be honest, in my white shirt and black pants, I thought I looked quite handsome. Moreover, I had practiced this pose repeatedly at home in front of the mirror, determined to leave a perfect photo of the lost youth. Just when I was feeling proud, an irresistible force hit my lower back, and I flew forward. Landing face first. The photo was taken at that moment. Willow shouted, Idiot. By the time I got up, she had already disappeared, leaving only a footprint on my clothes, Fengzi said. Willow just kicked you. Anna covered her mouth and laughed as she left. 
When one is extremely angry, one becomes unusually calm. I realized that anything related to Willow would bring endless trouble. I blocked her from everything, ignoring her no matter what she did. I finally found peace. After graduating from college, I joined a furniture factory. It was nothing like the elegant life of a designer I had imagined. Wearing a hard hat with a tape measure clipped to my waistband, I shuttled between the office and the workshop. Sometimes, due to the production process, I would even get into physical altercations with the workshop masters. By the end of the day, I often returned to the dormitory covered in sawdust. Despite the hard work, the salary was still a concern, and I hadn't even come close to affording the Lika set I had always wanted. Even more ridiculous were my parents. When I was in college, they were extremely strict, keeping a close eye on me to make sure I didn't date. After I started working, they threatened that if I dared to date, I might as well die away from home. Come on. This was a remote industrial area, and the furniture factory was full of men. Where was I supposed to find someone to date? I suddenly realized that Willow's kick not only shattered my youth but also my future and my love life. This year, my parents suddenly issued an ultimatum, resign immediately and come home for arranged dates or be kicked out of the family genealogy. I submitted my resignation and left the industrial area under the reluctant gazes of the men. However, when I got home, my mom mysteriously said that I came back too late. The girl had waited too long and left, which left me speechless. After lying around at home for a few days, I received an interview invitation with great benefits. So I went to check it out. To my utter surprise, after seven years, I met Willow again, and she was the one interviewing me. I couldn't believe my eyes, I had just thought she was incredibly beautiful. The male interviewer walked out and pushed me back. I brushed his hand away. Get lost. This has nothing to do with you. Willow hurriedly said, Makoto, Shixing, you guys go out first. Let me talk to him. Makoto, with slick back hair, a handsome guy, was still poking my chest with his finger. I'm warning you. Don't make trouble, or you'll regret it. Willow, afraid I might really start a fight with him, quickly pushed him out the door, saying, It's fine. We just have some misunderstandings. Misunderstandings? I laughed. I grabbed the back of her neck. Let's clear up our misunderstandings. For the past seven years, I've been grinding my teeth every night thinking of you. Just like before, she immediately, and soft, pleading, let go, let go, let go of me. I released her, and we stared at each other, sizing each other up. It's often said that girls change a lot as they grow up, and she had certainly changed a lot. She spoke softly. Long time no see. George, why are you back? I replied irritably. Thanks to you, I've been forced to come back for arranged dates. What does your dating have to do with me? This cursed profession hasn't let me meet any girls. She chuckled softly, a mischievous glint in her eyes. Come work at our company. There are lots of pretty girls. I patted my pants, ready to leave. Forget it. I don't want to see you again. 15000 a month. I hesitated. This salary in this small town wasn't top-notch but was quite sufficient. 20000 I struggled with my thoughts but still got up to leave thinking that sticking with this unlucky person would mean no amount of money would be worth it. 30,000. I sat back down, adjusting my posture. Did you say 30,000? Is this company yours or something? She glanced outside, leaned in, and whispered, it is, but keep it a secret. No one else knows, a man must know what to do and what not to do. But taking money from Willow was definitely something worth doing. On my first day at work, I made sure to dress up nicely, I tied my hair in a samurai bun, wore a fitted work outfit, looking pretty good with a touch of elegance amidst the nonchalance. I smiled at myself in the mirror, thinking, this should definitely charm a few ladies, or I wouldn't be George, who needs blind dates when I can win them over directly. This time, Willow didn't lie, there really were many pretty girls in the company. Of course, if they weren't all wearing wedding rings, I felt out of place among a group of flamboyant married women. They surrounded me tugging at my hair, pinching my shoulders. Oh, little brother, you're really handsome. Hey, cutie, your arms are quite firm. Willow stood in the distance, laughing until one woman lifted my shirt to check if I had ABS, and she came over to disperse the crowd. My face turned dark, realizing I had been naive again. How could I ever trust this troublemaker? She promised pretty girls that they were all just teasing women. After work, Willow stopped me. Come on, 
I'll treat you to dinner. I glared at her, and she immediately looked nervous. To 30,000 a month salary, it's real, right? She patted her chest. Looking pitiful, it's all written in black and white. How could I deceive you? I looked at her dismissively and said, Stop pretending to be innocent. You don't suit the lady act. I turned to leave, and she grabbed my hair, almost making me fall. Ha! Huh. Revealing your true colors now. I rolled up my sleeves, ready for a duel, but she just smiled softly. Seven years, and you're still a hothead. The boss is inviting you to dinner. Can't you show some respect? We had hot pot for dinner. She was surprisingly considerate, preparing the sauce and cooking the meat for me. I was curious about how this former sports prodigy ended up running a design company. She tilted her head, her soft curls falling down, looking very demure. There's no rule that says you must work in the field you studied, right? Through the steamy hot pot, her face appeared hazy. Surprisingly, she looked quite beautiful. I stared at her, the image of her tanned, wild face from high school alternating with the fair, gentle face in front of me. I felt a shiver down my spine. Are women natural-born actresses? She raised her glass, with tea instead of wine. I formally apologize to you. I mocked her. You kicked me face first into the ground back then. I wasn't as carefree as you are now. I'm sorry. Hearing her sincere apology and seeing her bowed head, I was taken aback, suddenly feeling uninterested. I poured out her tea, change it to white wine, and we can be brothers, no more grudges. Her eyes lit up, and she eagerly ordered a bottle of Gian Non Cone, filled her glass, and downed it in one gulp. Her boldness was impressive. I also drank my glass in one go. All right, Willow, this meal is on me. Let's wipe the slate clean and go our separate ways. Never to meet again. Her smile vanished. What do you mean? If the salary is too low, I'll raise it for you. 40,000, okay. I was a bit confused. In this small town, hiring a designer for 30,000 was already extravagant. I had agreed yesterday just to mess with her. I explained. I'm back for arranged dates. Once that's settled, I'll leave. She took out a contract from her bag, waving it triumphantly. Too late, the contract clearly states you have to work here for three years or pay ten times the compensation for breach. I was baffled. Even if she had a fortune, why would she be so eager to give away money? Willow's company mainly deals with exhibition wine cabinets for foreign trade. Clients focus on eye-catching appearances, not caring much about the materials, as long as they are sturdy and durable. Willow held a HR position, diligently watching dramas and playing games in her small office every day. Most of the women in the company were translators and order processors. In the furniture factory, my nostrils were filled with sawdust. Now, they were filled with the scent of perfume. Amidst the haze, I became interested in the various wine cabinets. However, within five days of joining, I was being spun around like a top. My boss was Makoto, rumored to be a top student from Sujo University, holding the director position. He clearly wanted to show his power bombarding me with emails and nitpicking every proposal I submitted. Basic requirements that could pass in one go were sent back three or four times. After changing the line colors, he would say the font color was wrong, adding comments about how I was an inefficient insider. This resulted in me working until 9 o'clock at night for two consecutive days. While I was deeply focused, a sudden eerie voice startled me, causing me to throw my mouse. Are you very busy? I almost swore. Lady, can you make some noise when you approach? Willow stuck out her tongue, looking seemingly cute, which only sent a shiver down my spine. Stop, stop. If I don't finish today, I'll have to work overtime tomorrow. Get lost and don't disturb me. She curiously watched the computer for a while, then directly shut it down. Time to clock out. I'll take you for a drink. I exploded. Are you crazy? I didn't save my work. She looked indifferent. It's okay. I'll redistribute some of your work tomorrow to lighten your load. I stared at her suspiciously. What does that mean? Hit me and then give me a candy. Are you trying to poo me? She paused, seeming to ponder, then smiled helplessly. George, can you think better of me? No. So, are you coming for a drink? No. She turned away, saying, too bad if you don't come. I was just about to tell you some news about Anna. This was my first time gossiping in my life. In a dimly lit quiet bar with soothing music. I poured fruit wine into Willow's glass with a flattering smile. Sis, tell me more. But she avoided the topic, asking about my experiences over the years. Finally, 
she said that Anna had gotten married abroad after graduating from college, returned to the country last year, and reportedly got divorced. I was speechless, I hadn't even been in a relationship, and she had already gone through a marriage. I remembered that evening when she held the sketchbook and smiled back at me, translucent in the sunset. Willow leaned in and asked, What? Are you sad? Do you want her WeChat? You still have a chance. I shook my head and drank several cups in silence. We had nothing to talk about, so we just drank. She even took photos and posted them on her moments. I became alert. Give me your phone. Why? She refused, so I sneer, grabbed her by the neck, and took her phone. As soon as I opened the album, there were photos of me drinking. Scrolling down, sure enough, she had been secretly photographing me during the interview. Willow, you never change, even as a boss. She kept begging for mercy. Let go first, I won't dare again. Let go. It's so embarrassing. While we were struggling, a figure suddenly rushed over, pulled Willow up, and scolded. Willow, why are you in a place like this? His tone was filled with unchallengeable anger and concern. He then looked at me with anger and disdain. It was Makoto, judging by his expression. He seemed to have a close relationship with Willow. I had no intention of entangling with him, and got up to leave. He blocked me. Juan, bringing a woman to a nightclub. I despise people like you. I pushed him away. Get lost. Don't act like a big shot after work. He still wouldn't let me go, blocking my way while babbling incessantly. He said I got into the company through connections and that he wasn't afraid of someone like me. If I kept bothering Willow, he would fire me. I laughed at him. Then go ahead and fire me. Willow panicked, breaking free from his grip. What are you talking about? I brought him here. Makoto clearly didn't believe her and asked if she had any dirt on me, advising her not to be afraid because I couldn't bully her. His dramatic performance was almost laughable. I didn't bother to figure out why he was hostile towards me. After all, I didn't like him much either when I first met him. Seeing him act like a protector was annoying, so as I brushed past him, I bumped his shoulder hard. He got angry and reached out to push my head down. I dodged the sigh and elbowed him in the chest, making him step back. His face turning red, he wanted to lunge at me again. Go. Ever since high school, whenever I thought of the humiliation of being pinned down by Willow, I felt both ashamed and angry. So. I bought a punching bag and dumbbells. Training diligently, I wasn't going to back down. Willow was really anxious now, pulling Makoto back. What are you doing here? I saw your moments about being at a nightclub, and I was worried. Turns out this jerk brought you here. So I need to teach him a lesson. Seeing his face twisted in pain while still trying to lecture me made me laugh inside. Some people are like ducks. Their whole body can be soft, but their mouth never is. I turned and walked away. Willow chased after me, apologizing repeatedly and asking me not to be angry. I waved her off. Enough. Enough. Nothing good ever happens when I'm around you. Makoto, not giving up, grabbed Willow's arm. Willow, you don't need to be afraid of him. Willow's eyes turned cold. Let go of my hand. Makoto was stunned, seemingly never having seen her like this. Willow, let go of my hand and stop following us. She tugged at my sleeve, apologetically saying, Boda, let's go. The next day, Makoto returned all my emails with a sour face. Furious, I stormed into his office to confront him. He just stared at his computer and lightly said they weren't suitable, without giving any reason, in the old furniture factory. This would have led to a direct fight to settle, who was right. I actually missed those straightforward, rough guys. For several days, his emails flooded in, full of criticism. I noticed the timing, he deliberately withheld some emails, sending them at points, when I could finish the tasks, I would be stressed. I sent a screenshot to Willow, boss lady, I'm afraid I can't handle this job, she replied. Wait a moment. Shortly after, a message from the mysterious boss account appeared in the group chat. Notice, effective immediately, George's tasks will be directly assigned by me. Xiao Q and Shaol will assist with translations, no one else is to interfere. Then, on at to Makoto. Please handle and redistribute the backlog of tasks previously assigned to George. The whole office fell silent, and I was stunned. Even though it confirmed the rumors of my nepotism, it felt strangely satisfying. I quickly messaged Willow. Hey, do you know how to proofread? Nope. So please make sure everything you give me is perfect. With less work to do, 
I found myself with too much free time. Willow, afraid I'd get bored, tried various ways to chat with me and even encouraged me to play games. Sometimes she'd sneak downstairs to get takeout, and we'd hide in her office, eating and playing. I couldn't help but tease. Boss lady, you're a bit stingy, not even providing afternoon tea for employees. She earnestly explained, there are many women in the company. We need to take care of their figures and can't let them need too many snacks. I scoffed, about to mock her for claiming to have a great figure. But as I glanced at her curves and slender waist, I wisely kept my mouth shut. As usual, after finishing our game, Willow and I were about to leave work. Willow asked me, do you remember Feng Zi? He's organizing a class reunion. Are you going? I refused, because of my embarrassing high school experiences. After graduation, I tried to live as if I were a different person, not keeping in touch with any classmates. She smirked and said that Anna would be there. Didn't I want to see my former goddess? I hesitated for a moment but still refused. I hadn't accomplished much in these years, and going there would just make me look like a loser. For some reason, this made her burst into laughter. I glared at her. She finally stopped laughing and shook the BMW keys in her hand. I'll lend you the car. You can show off for once. You be the boss. And I'll be the secretary. How about it? I looked her up and down, undeniably tempted. If I could turn the once vicious woman into my little secretary and drive a luxury car, showing up in front of the classmates who once mocked me, it seemed like all my high school regrets and humiliations could be washed away. I stared at her suspiciously. You're not going to play me, are you? You're not going to pull a stunt on me at the reunion, are you? She raised her hand and solemnly swore she wouldn't. That night, when I picked up Willow, I was stunned. She had light makeup on and was wearing an evening dress, looking elegant and refined. Damn, Willow, you look like this. Who could recognize you? She blinked and asked. How about it, boss? Does your secretary give you face? I nodded repeatedly and awkwardly said thank you. She frowned at me and directed me into a mall, insisting I change into a suit and dress shoes, seeing the price tags made me wince. But after changing, I did look quite dapper, though I felt conflicted about spending so much just to show off. Willow meticulously adjusted my sleeves and collar, praising, see, now you look like a boss. Her fingers brushed against my neck, sending chills down my spine. She checked the time and had me sit down while she redid my hair, carefully parting the bangs and arranging the ends. All right, the act was on. Just as I was about to pay, the store clerk informed me, sir, your wife has already paid. Ha ha. I was in a great mood and threw an arm around Willow's shoulder. Thanks, buddy. I'll pay you back later. She pushed me away and snapped. Who's your buddy? Let's go. The reunion was held at a sprawling countryside estate, beautifully adorned with fish ponds and flower beds. Willow followed half a step behind me, her high heels clicking rhythmically. Entering the hall, I basked in the astonished looks from everyone. Fengzi had turned into a chubby guy and gave me a thumbs up. Boss Wong, the wheel of fortune has turned. You've even tamed the high school demon girl. I nodded nonchalantly. I was trying to act mysterious, mainly because Anna was seated right next to me. In fact, the moment I entered, I had been looking for her. She was sitting in a corner, wearing a light blue dress and a matching hairband, still as pure as a student, with no signs of having been divorced. As we sat down, Fengzi smartly moved Anna to the seat next to me, facing my former crush. I gathered all my courage and only managed to say, long time no see. She covered her mouth and laughed softly. Boss Wan has been so successful. No wonder you haven't contacted your old classmates. She raised her glass to clink with my, her fingers brushing against the back of my hand, making me unexpectedly nervous. Willow was also surrounded by many people. She had a high reputation in high school and now, transformed from a wild girl to a beauty. She attracted even more male classmates. She smiled lightly and didn't touch a drop of alcohol, then playfully glanced at me and said she still had to drive the boss home, so she couldn't drink. She asked me to drink for her, seeing her giving me so much face. I relaxed and accepted every drink. If I hadn't gotten used to drinking cheap liquor with those rough guys before, I might have been knocked out. Midway through the drinking, Anna pushed her phone towards me with her WeChat QR code on the screen. I felt a bit dazed. After graduation, the only classmate I had tried to keep in touch with was her, but every attempt to at her went unanswered. Now, 
She was offering her QR code to me dot dot and throughout the whole event. No one mentioned the embarrassing incidents from high school involving Willow and me. A wave of unreality and irony washed over me. After chatting about school memories, the conversation naturally shifted to social status, networking, and business deals. Willow handled it all with ease. Anna, perhaps because her experiences were so different, eventually walked out alone. Feeling dizzy from the alcohol, I followed her out. I thought it would draw laughter, but everyone just ignored it. Anna was standing in the corridor, staring blankly at the sky. I stood beside her, thinking I had a thousand words to say or some motivational speech, but all I managed to blurt out was, the weather is nice. The alcohol hit me, and damn it, I hurried away and threw up magnificently in the sink. Just like the 1500 meter race in the school sports meet, I felt like a clown being instantly reverted to my original form. This time, Anna didn't scream or run away. She gently patted my back and said worriedly, don't drink too fast. Countless emotions intertwined in my heart, making me feel terribly uncomfortable. After a while, Willow came and took me away from the estate. Walking on the path between the flower beds, the wind rustled the leaves. My nose felt sore. My eyes welled up with tears, and I waved my hand in a daze, saying, Pay the bill, I'm treating. Pay the bill. She supported me like a child, soothingly saying, Okay, okay, it's paid. When I woke up, I was in a hotel. Amidst the chaotic fragments of memory, I recalled refusing to go home, talking a lot, and even shedding tears. Willow drove me around the city in her car. I felt a surge of emotion, grateful for her effort, and called her to thank her. The phone rang and a buzzing sound came from the bedside table. Willow's phone. I was confused and looked around. My suit was neatly hung in the closet, but on the sofa was a small red LV bag. What the hell? I stood at the bathroom door, my voice trembling. Willow. A muffled sound came from inside, and the door opened. She was brushing her teeth, wearing a loose bathrobe, with a large expanse of white skin on her chest that almost blinded me. Willow was putting on makeup and mumbling, what's your problem? Yelling like a ghost, one bed for you, one for me, I didn't take advantage of you. You drank like a corpse, I worried all night. You're restless when you sleep, always kicking the covers. I felt utterly embarrassed, my face flushed, and I kept apologizing dot dot at the end of the month, I received a notification that 30,000 had been deposited into my account. I was stunned and asked Willow, are you serious? She looked at me. Puzzled, is there a problem? If you want a raise, you'll have to wait until next month. My mind was full of questions. Either my abilities had been severely underestimated before, or this company was doing some smuggling under the guise of design. Before I could speak, she frowned and said, Come quickly, there's a problem with the product, and the client wants compensation. I hurried over, only to find that it was a wine cabinet I was responsible for. Its load bearing structure had failed. And after the client placed exhibits on it, the support frame broke. I carefully checked the design drawings and pinpointed the problem to the side support of the wine cabinet. I curse it. Someone modified this, making it for millimeters thinner. No wonder it failed. She reassured me not to worry, saying she believed I wouldn't make such a mistake. I thought for a moment and then sneered. What good is your belief? The client is already demanding compensation. Did Makoto do this? She shook her head saying she wasn't sure. We either had to compensate or repair it, but the shipping costs for repairs would be substantial. I was both anxious and furious. I pulled her up from her seat, opened the software, and started making adjustments. Add a steel floor flagpole to the side, and that will solve the low bearing issue. Plus, it improves the design and increases its distinctiveness. Ask the client if they can accept this. An hour later, she was shaking my arm. George, you're amazing. The client agreed. I smiled awkwardly. Could you stop treating me like a child? The problem was solved, but I couldn't tolerate Makoto's malice any longer. He was the only one who had the opportunity to modify my files. I wanted to confront him, just as I stood up. Willow pushed me back into my seat. See, you're acting like a child again. He's the design director, and I still have a lot of work with him. I was fuming inside and couldn't understand why this idiot had such animosity towards me. Willow rolled her eyes and mumbled something about me being stubborn. I thought Willow would handle it gradually, but she directly demoted Makoto. This time, he dropped the pretense entirely. He pulled up a chair, threw his resignation letter on the table, propped his legs up, 
and sneered. All right, Wom. Looks like you have some strong backing with the boss. I'm down with this crappy company. He then adopted a dramatic stance, claiming he had revealed his true self. Let's reintroduce ourselves. I'm the president of Chon Hong Company. Willow, I actually joined this company just for you. He said that two years ago. He attended a job fair where Willow was also recruiting. He fell in love at first sight. The position Willow was hiring for matched his skills, so he played the role of a job-seeking executive for love. Willow, come with me. Over the past two years, you know how serious I've been about you. His deeply affectionate words left both of us stunned. Willow typed furiously on the keyboard, finalizing his resignation, effective immediately, after work. A Bentley was parked in front of the company. Makoto was inside, waving at Willow. When she ignored him, he got out and ran over, full of smiles. Willow, I wasn't lying. I genuinely care about you. Come with me. My company is much better than this place. You won't have to worry about being mistreated. Of course, he didn't forget to glance at me after saying that dot dot Willow, clearly annoyed, raised her left eyebrow. I was alarmed and quickly moved aside. I remembered that when she raised her left eyebrow, it meant her anger was at its peak, then things could get physical. But she just took a deep breath and spoke clearly. First, this crappy company is my hard work. Second, you modified the files without permission, causing losses. Just because I didn't pursue it doesn't mean you were right. Lastly, mistreat me. George, tell me, who dares to mistreat me? Do you dare? Her tone was icy. I nodded like a pecking bird. Exactly, exactly. How could I ever mistreat you? Makoto's mouth hung open, his face turning red, and he blurted out, Do you know how much I like you? Enough. Stop acting like a drama queen. Bodo, let's go. After taking a few steps, she stopped, turned back, and gave him a hard kick. Damn it, you almost cost me a lot of money. This is a warning. Don't harass me again, or else. I couldn't hold back and burst into laughter. Those were the exact words Makoto had said to me before. Seeing him trying to persist, I shook my fist at him, and he left dejectedly. Willow glared at me. What's so funny? Do you think this is funny? Now that we don't have a director, you're up. I quickly stopped laughing. No way. I can't do this job. She kept walking. Useless. The next day, my office supplies had already been moved to the director's office, and Willow had relocated her little setup in there as well. People in the company were whispering. It felt so strange. Seeing her curled up on the sofa watching dramas, I scratched my head for a long time. Finally, I couldn't help but say, Damn, it feels like you're keeping me. She froze for a moment, her mouth twitching. And after holding back for a while, she said, What? Afraid people will say you're living off a woman. I scoffed, if I had to live off someone, it wouldn't be you. Seeing her struggle to hold back her laughter, I sighed. Willow, you really don't have to do this. I said we've already settled everything. Over the past two months, I occasionally nitpicked at her and caused her trouble, but she had completely changed her ways, always speaking kindly to me. As time went on, I began to feel a bit guilty. She even helped me make up for my high school regrets. I really had no reason to stay here any longer. Settle everything you wish. How will you repay what you owe me? What could I possibly owe you? I haven't touched your money. If you have the guts, don't accept it. She threw down her tablet and said, George, do you also think this company is boring? Or is it that you just can't stand me? She got angrier and angrier, grabbed her coat, and walked out. I quickly got up and pulled her back. Hey. 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 Don't say things like that. I just don't want to take advantage of you. You're paying me too much. She laughed in exasperation. You're the first person I've met who complains about a high salary. Are you going to take the director position or not? Useless. Just like she had goaded me into running the 1500 meters back in school. She slammed the door and left. I went home feeling equally upset and complained to my parents, asking if I should still be going on arranged dates. If not, I'd leave. My mom, still mysterious as ever, praised the girl to the heavens, asking me to be patient a little longer. That evening, Willow sent me a link to a design competition. She taunted, You've always blamed me for pushing you into studying furniture. Prove your talent if you can. If you win, I'll let you go. She successfully fired me up again. During the day, I worked for her. At night, I pulled my hair out thinking about designs. One afternoon, 
I received an unexpected message from Anna, inviting me to dinner. She even sent a set of photos of my sketchbook from high school. I was surprised she still had it. The pencil marks on the sketchbook seemed to penetrate time, and the hurry in those memories seemed bathed in a soft glow, she said. I'll return the sketchbook to you. Let's meet one last time. I won't be coming back again. I had no choice but to beg Willa to borrow the BMW. She asked me where I was going. I intended to tell the truth, but when the words were on the tip of my tongue, I couldn't say them, so I said a college friend was visiting, and I wanted to show off a bit. She excitedly asked, can I come with you? I've never heard you talk about college. I awkwardly said it wouldn't be convenient. She snorted and threw me the keys. Anna chose a place by the river, the Shuyun Pavilion. This restaurant had an elegant design. In high school, I would sometimes come here to sketch it, but I always knew it was expensive inside, so I never went in. I sighed inwardly. Once you start showing off, it's hard to stop. Our table was by the window. She smiled lightly and pushed the sketchbook towards me. I opened it and saw that it was well preserved. She asked me, did you like me in high school? I looked at her honestly and said, I did. She covered her mouth and laughed softly, the river breeze lifting the strands of hair by her ear. Making her look extraordinarily gentle, we tactfully only talked about past funny stories. I didn't ask why she avoided me after graduation or never accepted my WeChat requests. I pushed the sketchbook back to her and she suddenly covered my hand with hers, I was startled. She looked at me frankly and asked, Do you still like me now? I calmly withdrew my hand and shook my head. If you like the sketchbook, keep it. If not, just throw it away. She looked disappointed, gazing out at the vast river, and began to talk about her failed marriage. I really wanted her to stop, to not tarnish the memory of the girl I once knew. I took a sip of tea, turned my head, and saw Willow standing at the staircase. She was wearing a casual white hoodie and jeans, with a short brim cap, full of energy. Our eyes met. Damn it. Couldn't be more coincidental. Anna was still gazing at the river. Unaware that Willow had come up, I waited anxiously for her to come over and spoil everything, but she just looked at me for a while, expressionless, and then walked downstairs. I took out my phone to explain to her, but all I got was a red exclamation mark, feeling chaotic inside. Anna seemed to have finished her story, and with a self-mocking tone, said, It seems Willow has always been deeply in love with you. Even now, she still follows you. She's always been stubborn. Like in high school. Once she sets her mind on something, she doesn't let go. I looked up, confused. What are you talking about? She looked puzzled. Anyone can see it. She liked you a lot in high school. She then teased, with a hint of jealousy. Didn't you take her as your secretary? take her as my secretary. I was her secretary for two months. It felt like I had discovered a huge secret that everyone knew but me. Anna, I have something urgent to deal with. You'll have to go back on your own. I bolted out, calling Willow. She hung up as soon as it rang. Then her phone was turned off. Recalling her blatant favoritism over the past two months, my heart felt like it was filled with durian shells. Both blocked and painful, I went back to the company. It was dark inside and she wasn't there. In a state of panic, my phone ran. Willow's voice was icy. Get over here right now. I sighed in relief, putting on a playful smile. Big sister, you need to tell me where you are so I can get there. Don't you dare laugh. Get over here right now. I rushed to her house. She stood at the door of the villa. As soon as I got out of the car, she threw a bag at my head. Take it back. From now on, we're even. It was a small leather file bag. I opened it and found all the cartoons I had drawn in high school that she had confiscated and crumpled into the trash. When did she quietly collect them all together? Did she meticulously smooth out all those wrinkles at night? As she turned to go back inside, I ran over and grabbed her hand. She turned back, glaring at me, her face already covered in tears. Get lost. Feeling anxious but unable to find the words, I could only act shamelessly. Well, you still have to drive me home. It's far. Ignoring her protests, I dragged her into the car. She remained cold the whole way. I felt guilty but couldn't help smiling. It was like finally solving a puzzle that had baffled me for seven years. All this time, I thought my grudges were deep hatred, but they were actually lingering affections. We passed by a convenience store, and I stopped the car. Wait a second. I'll buy something. She just stared out the window, not acknowledging me. 
Her face still bore traces of tears. She looked like a cute little girl, surprisingly endearing. Do you dare to go somewhere with me? Spit it out quickly and let's go home. I took her to the back gate of our high school and pointed at the wall. Do you dare to climb over? There was a gap in the wall that had been there for seven years. I wondered if the school intentionally left it as an escape route for the students. She looked around nervously. I had already climbed up Pan extended my hand to her. She whispered. Are you crazy? I smiled. Almost. Are you coming or not? She stomped her foot and gave me her hand. It was already 11 p.m. and the campus was quiet. Despite being a bold girl, she was nervous and too flustered to be angry. She let me lead her by the hand as we wandered around the campus. I pointed at a tree. Remember this tree? You hung my bike up there. After school, I had to climb the tree to get it, with everyone watching, while you shouted, monkeys going up, monkeys going up, and here, in the morning, we swept the fallen leaves, we fought with the brooms until they broke, and we both got scolded. I ended up paying for it, she snorted lightly, and here, you kicked me and I fell flat on my face. Even though I was trying to look cool, she burst out laughing, and that final duel, I actually lost. You threw me so hard, I was dazed. She scoffed, weakling. So, want to have another fight now? She looked at the empty playground and, after a long silence, said, Forget it, it's pointless, in your eyes, I'll always be a tombo. She quietly walked along the white lines of the core, while I follow, stepping on her shadow cast by the moonlight. It's nostalgic, this is my first time back at school since graduation. Everything seems the same, yet everything has changed. You're leaving, aren't you? I tore up the contract. I won't hold you back anymore. I always wanted to change the way you saw me. I wanted to be a proper lady. I don't need glasses at all. I wore them to look more ladylike. She started to choke up as she spoke. In college, I wanted to contact you. To apologize. But you never responded. You even changed your number to avoid me. I guess I really am a terrible person. A contradictory person. I wanted to bully you. But deep down, I wanted to be good to you. I took out the candies I had bought, strawberry flavored, and popped one into my mouth. I patted her shoulder. She turned around, her face covered in tears under the moonlight, making me feel both pain and guilty. I hugged her, and her eyes widened, reflecting the crescent moon in the sky. Can you close your eyes for a moment? She panicked and whispered, what are you going to do? I kissed her on the lips, the sweet and fragrant strawberry scent was intoxicating. Time is indeed magical. After seven years, it felt like a full circle had turned. The school I once despised had now become my most beautiful memory. This hand was held by her, wasn't it? Willow fiercely scrubbed my hand, using half a bottle of hand sanitizer and still scrubbing hard. Sis, she suddenly grabbed it. I couldn't stop her. I dressed up like a college student to make you proud and used my car to meet Anna. She got rougher, and I cried out in pain. Stop, stop. My fingers are going to break. Really broken. She panicked. Does it hurt? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I pulled her into my arms. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. Compared to what you've endured all these years, this is nothing. Her eyes filled with tears again. You can't say things like that. It'll make me cry. Reporting to the boss lady. I have a blind date tonight. I tried to refuse but my parents are threatening me. Please advise. Go. I stared at her suspiciously. Don't say it's fine and then disappear tonight. She was nonchalantly doing her makeup in the mirror. She already had a delicate face, but still loved to put on makeup. She pursed her lips, which were a most peach pink, making my heart race. I won't disappear. You have to go and make sure uncle and auntie aren't troubled. Dress nicely. I'll meet her and tell her right away that I already have someone I love. It won't take more than two minutes, in the end, I couldn't resist my feelings. Holding down her struggling hands, I kissed her deeply, tasting her lipstick. I pulled my messy hair back and dug out some old clothes from a couple of years ago. Looking in the mirror, I thought, okay, this shabby look guarantees the day will be a flop unless the girl is blind. In the living room, my mom was beaming, constantly praising the girl. She's wonderful. It was driving me crazy. Mom. I've told you I'm already in a relationship. You've seen the photos. Do I really have to go? My dad glared. You're not going. Want me to break your legs? My mom grabbed my hand and urged me to leave quickly. The date was at a dessert shop. The sweet scent of cream cakes filling the air. 
I sat there dejectedly, waiting for the girl, texting Willow to report, but she didn't reply. Suddenly, my mom stood up. Oh my, dear, you're here. I looked up, and there was Willow, in a floral dress, her eyes full of mischief. I watched in shock as my mom and Willow's mother left hand in hand. Willow sat down and waved her hand in front of my face. Dumbstruck, didn't I tell you to dress nicely? Didn't you say you'd tell her you already have someone you love as soon as you meet? Hey, it's been more than two minutes already. I looked at her neck with a wicked glint, and she instinctively shrank back. Willow, what's going on? But this time, she stubbornly refused to say anything. The next evening, at Fuyan Tea Restaurant, both sets of parents met. My dad and Willow's father hit it off immediately, exchanging tips on fishing spots and their latest catches. Willow's mother held the menu and asked my mom, that water chestnut jelly from last time was delicious, shall we order one for everyone? Willow, looking sweet and obedient, served tea to everyone. I was completely stunned. It felt like they were all very familiar with each other, and I was the outsider. When we got home, my mom was laughing heartily and explained everything. After you went to university, this little girl often came to our house to ask about you. Your dad really likes her. He says she's a girl who dares to love and hate. Later, both sets of parents met. Don't be fooled by her father's friendly demeanor. Back in our youth, he was quite a famous figure. Your dad was worried for a while, afraid they wouldn't accept us and that he'd lose his daughter-in-law. I was full of questions. Wait, when did you all meet? Let me think, it was around your second year in college. Hearing this, my legs almost gave out. No wonder they had forbidden me from dating, always making me write reports about my life, which I did for seven years. This mid-autumn festival, your dad and I went to their house to deliver gifts. Her father said it was time to bring back the dumb ox that was roaming outside. The little girl was too shy to agree, insisting she'd come on her own. I pointed at myself, the dumb ox roaming outside. When Willow walked out of the dressing room, I was stunned. The wedding dress, blooming like a lily, made her look like a fairy. She walked slowly towards me, twirled, and asked with a charming smile, Do I look good? I swallowed hard and nodded dot dot she was truly beautiful. How wonderful it is that such a beautiful person has become my wife. The kerosene lamp cast an orange glow, illuminating the big red double happiness character. Willow sat on the wedding bed, her face slightly red. I let out a playful shout and lunged at her. She flipped me onto the bed with a deft move, straddling me with her long legs. Looking down at me from above, she smiled brightly and seductively. Her soft arms encircled my neck. George, do you yield? I laughed, yes, I yield. She leaned close to my ear and whispered, HMPH, I just want to be on top of you. 